Okay, today we're discussing the integral test. This continues our discussion on uh, sequences and series and uh, convergence or divergence of them. And now we have this uh, partial sums. We have the, well, let's look at this uh, series here. We have 1 over 2n. It has partial sums of 1 half, 3 quarters, and 7 eighths. And those, those partial sums come from the, uh, the instantaneous sums that the series has as n approaches, as n increases from 1 and goes upwards from there. So the first term is 1 half. The second term is 1 quarter, so the 3 quarters is the 1 half plus 1 quarter. When n equals 3, this running total is going to be 7 eighths. That's going to be 1 half plus 1 quarter plus 1 eighth. And then it's 15 sixteenths, 31 30 seconds, and so on like that, as n counts from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The series converges only when the partial sums are bounded from above. As you can see with this example here, these values get closer and closer to the number 1 as you, uh, as you count through them. So this one would be, following this pattern, it would be 31, 30 seconds, the 63, 64s. It's bounded from above by the number 1, and this series would converge. In this example, each time we added a, uh, a term to this summation, the uh, error, the, the partial sum minus the actual convergence of L, was, was halved each time as it, you get as it, so each iteration, you're half as far off from the convergence as you were before. So it rapidly converges to, to the number one. And so what this, there's actually this um, corollary of a theorem from, from the previous section in the book that says, that assures us that the sequence, I mean the, the series, if, of non-negative terms converges if and only if these partial sums are bounded from above by some by some number. And so and here's a case where that that's not true. You have the harmonic series. That's a series that's just 1 over n and it counts from n equals 1 up to infinity. So you have 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2, plus 1 over 3, and so on. Now you notice that if you take this function 1 over n and you take the limit of it as n approaches infinity, that limit is in fact 0. But since there, there is no upper bound on the sums, the series diverges. Like notice with the second term here is uh, 1 half. I'm going to switch to red. And if you uh, were to sum the next two terms, this would be greater than one half. And basically for this series, if you choose some point in here, let's say uh, j, there's uh, the partial sum from, from one to j is going to equal a certain number. But there is any, there's another point out here somewhere, let's say is k that you can find a point k such as from j to k is greater than the than the starting point of 1 to j. And no matter how far along j is, you can find a k point where this partial sum is even, but exclusive to the section of j to k is even greater than what you had before. And so, like for example here, 1 third and plus 1 quarter is greater than one half. If you want something that's greater than one and a half, you'd have to go a few terms further, but you'll find it. If you want to find something that's greater than the first four terms summed together, you probably would have to go eight or nine terms out, but you will find a number that sum. You'll find the group that sums to be greater than this total. 
and so basically for any number you want to find you, you can go out far enough with your k to find a number that exceeds it there is no upper bound this would actually uh, this series would actually diverge because of that and so some series do diverge to infinity and we have this uh, tool called the integral test that uh, that helps us find out if we have a series that converges or not to a, a certain value. So we, so that way we would know when we should quit or when we sh or when we should not even try to find out what it converges to. The integral test is only a test. It doesn't tell us what the series can actually converges to. It just tells us that does this converge or does it diverge? And it's a pretty intelligent test in, in how it works. It uses improper integrals, essentially. So uh, a, a series is a, is a group of discrete numbers that are added up. And they're usually defined by a function f of x, which would draw a rough curve of imagining these, all these rectangles. Well, the rectangles under a, a smooth curve the represent an area. It's less than the area. It's less than the area under the curve so because there's a little bit of uh, error between matching a curve with a uh, with a smooth line when you use rectangles. And so these these rectangular spaces that are kept under the curve are uh, are always going to be less than the integral. The idea is that if these uh, if this integral, this improper integral from 1 to infinity, is converging to a certain value, if it does converge, then the rectangles, the sum of the rectangles on the curve must also converge. That's the uh, idea of this. So here's sort of what we're looking at. This is a curve that, that we, draw, we draw here, and there's the rectangles underneath it. Right here, is the is one. This is the sum where the summation starts. We're adding in this rectangle, the next one, the next one. If this integral curve converges, the improper integral, then the space, then the area underneath that curve from one to infinity must be finite, and and that each of these rectangles must sum to an exact value. In fact, it would be this, the sum of those rectangles and plus this one right here would be the, what the summation would equal to. So here's how the integral test is done. It's, yeah, you take that function a of n that's just right out of your summation and you perform the, the integral upon this. They say that a, a sub n is equal to f of n. So you perform the integral on f of n from the, its starting point n up to infinity. And the, the n is typically 1. Either going to be 1 or 0, but usually 1. And what we would find is that the uh, they would do, they would both either converge or diverge. If the uh, integral diverges, then certainly the rectangles under there would diverge too. If the integral converges, the, the rectangles are going to have a finite area. So this is actually a fairly reliable test. So let's revisit this harmonic series. We have uh, the function 1 over n. If we uh, take this function 1 over n, it's uh, you have this integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. You perform this integral of 1 over x. That's basically the natural log of, uh, of x. That's uh, doing this as a proper integral. That's going to be the limit from as n approaches infinity of natural log of n 
minus natural log of 1. Natural log doesn't converge, so so this uh, the series will will diverge. This is a uh, integral that does the proof that shows harmonic series will diverge and not converge to a number. We have another type of series. Uh, this is the only other series we'll do in this section, and that's the P series. The you you might remember this. We did an we did an integral of one of these uh, a few videos back, and we'll look at it again too, in case you missed it. This is a p series. It's one over one to the p, two to the p, three to the p, where p is a constant that you've defined, and the uh, the counting term is the one, two, three in the denominator, the base of that p exponent. So, to find out the convergence rule for the p-series, you would need to do the, this uh, improper integral. So, let's revisit our integral of 1 over x to the p. There are, there are basically two domains of p centered around p that's, that cannot be equal to 1. And this... Uh, and based on that central point, uh, the p will either converge to a value or it will diverge to infinity. So let's say when p is not equal to, to 1, this integral would become a power rule integral, like you've seen the earlier in the class. It's, it would be of this form in, that's written in red. And so evaluating this as an improper integral from 1 to infinity like we did in a couple videos past we got uh, the limit of b approaching infinity of this integral ranging from b from 1 to b substituting in and and as b becomes very large some terms will disappear with this we can see why p cannot equal 1, because if p is equal to 1, you would end up with a division by 0. So, so uh, the case when p is greater than 1, the limit becomes 0, and we're left with 1 over p minus 1. And if p is less than 1, this limit becomes infin infinite. The integral is infinite, and this is the case where p is equal to 1. So we got two examples here. We got, uh, does the summation of uh, 1 for 1 to infinity of e to the negative 2n converge or diverge? Well, you prepare this as an improper integral. It's, uh, this function is continuous, it's positive, and it's decreasing, so this criteria is met. So we need to test with this integral. Let's take this here, and by substitution, integration by substitution, it's equal to negative one half e to negative two x. You perform this. Uh, you apply the uh, the boundaries of n and one onto this, and and you end up with these. And here we have our one it's not written it doesn't have to be and we apply this limit and when I rewrite this uh, this negative exponent as a positive exponent by moving it into the denominator you'll see that when n approaches infinity the uh, the denominator becomes the very 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 large and and converges to zero the uh, the one half e to the negative two is a constant, so it doesn't really play any role at all in convergence or divergence. So this uh, this integral converges. That means that our sum also converges to a value. Another example: Does five over n plus one converge or diverge? It's continuous. It's positive. It's decreasing. 
And so take a look at the integral. Does this, uh, one thing we could do right away is we can take the 5 outside the integral because we're just testing if this converges or not. We don't care by how much it does or doesn't. We just, it's a binary case. We don't really even need this 5. We can discard that and just solve the improper integral without it because we're not looking for an exact answer. We're just looking for a true or false if this converges or not. And so it simplified the integral slightly, the taking out that constant multiple. The integral of this is a natural log of x plus 1. So you apply the boundaries of n and 1 to this. You have, whoops, uh, that's, and so that's uh, n plus 1 from this x plus 1, and 1 plus 1, which is, which is 2. These are our boundaries applied to this. And as n approaches infinity, the sum of these n plus 1 also is infinity. The natural log of, of a very large number is also going to be very large, approaching infinity. So this term right here will diverge. Log base c of 2 is a, is a constant. It won't have, uh, it will not have any effect at all. But because this limit diverges, the sum must also diverge. So you can use these improper integrals to, to t test for the uh, convergence or divergence of, uh, of a lot of different sums. In fact, basically any of them, any of them that you know how to do an integral for, you can test for the summation of. It's a pretty powerful trick. And so that's, uh, we'll be going over some of these in class. And so uh, have fun with this. and and make some tries at it in the homework. I'll see you then.